It's Premier back in here on the YouTube video. So today I'm here with my sister. Hello. I'm Sit Lolly. I'm ready to eat. Yeah, me too. So recently I have been getting like a lot of questions. Where's your sister? Where's she been? What do you have to say to her? Well, on my channel, there will be more questions answered. While it was happening, I was really dodging all of the questions, not really responding or keeping you guys in the loop at all. Here's my besties, Aww. so you guys gotta know. We got Veggie Girl. Yes. Yeah. A little veggie bugger. So good. So this is actually something that's a part of it. I got this ketchup from Veggie Girl. But then I have this ketchup that's sugar free. So my sister has ketchup that is sugar free. My sister is now keto because she was in the hospital for about five months. This was all because of a mosquito bite. And we would always get bit by mosquitoes like a lot. And you would get the most mosquito bites. Mm -hmm. And we would always like make a joke, oh, it's because you're sweet. We weren't expecting something like this to happen. Basically a sick mosquito, it's called West Nile. It bit me. Uh, one day like my head, it felt heavy, like a headache but my head felt heavy. So basically I was here in LA and my mom was supposed to come pick me up, but she kept pushing back the day to come get me because my sister had gotten sick. And we were thinking that maybe she got sick from school or something. She was acting so scared, like so scared. And I knew like what kind of sick my sister was. Like it was just like a regular, like cold yeah. or fever, like. Yeah, it was regular, it wasn't. It wasn't like extreme or anything. Like there was no symptoms of like crazy disease, something, I don't know. So my mom kept pushing the days back and I was just like, okay, I'll just stay here, wait for you. Finally, she comes, picks me up. Whole time she's driving over here, two hour drive, she's on FaceTime with my little sister. Mm -hmm. And my sister's at home. Just watching a show, sleeping, like doing regular sick stuff. Mm -hmm. She gets me, we start heading back home. She tells me to FaceTime my sister, to stay on FaceTime with my sister the whole ride home. Obviously do it and you know, respect how my mom is feeling about the situation. In my head, I'm like, she's doing doing too much she's just sick yeah. that's what i was thinking like about. not that bad it's probably just like some kind of cold obviously if my mom is going somewhere while my sister is sick like she, she's gonna stay on the phone with her like that makes sense because she doesn't want to leave her sick I don't know if I'm explaining right and that's why you guys need to make sure you go to my sister's channel because she's gonna be doing a video explaining the whole situation and experience that happened to her. I'm just explaining my perspective and y'all know I'm not the best talker so <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we stay on the phone with my sister. We finally get back home. We're there with my sister. My mom starts taking care of her. A few hours later, my mom's taking my sister to the hospital. I'm completely scared. Mom calls me and says, like, we're going to the hospital. Like, she doesn't, like, take me with her. It was just a in-the-moment decision. And I'm pretty sure it was late at night. I don't remember going to that children's ER. I don't remember that. Wait, so you have no memory of leaving the house to go to the hospital? No, I remember her saying we were going. And then after that blink? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had such a high fever. Her fever was out of control. The highest my mom has ever seen. That's really, really scary. If you guys don't know, fevers are really, really bad. Like, you can literally die. It's like your brain heating up or like literally boiling, right? Or something. My mom clearly took her to the hospital because she's not able to keep her at a steady or regular temperature and her temperature keeps raising to unsafe measures. I'm really scared, but there's nothing that I can do. So just stay home and hope that she comes back. We thought that you were gonna come back like that night. Like we thought it was gonna be a quick trip to the hospital, come back. They don't have doctors trained just for children. They have a children's, children's unit. She ended up spending the night in the hospital. Had me even more scared. The next day I'm spamming my mom like what's happening my mom's not really answering me that much i'm texting my abuelita my abuelita ends up taking me to the hospital to go see my sister they said that they were gonna actually fly her in a helicopter to the children's hospital in la so my abuelita brings me to the hospital i'm there i'm upset i'm you know let me see my sister they don't want to let me see my sister it's a, i don't know it was like covid or i don't know they had some type of problem i'm pretty sure they wouldn't even let my mom go in to the helicopter with my sister like it took arguing and stuff for her to be able to go yeah. with you. Yeah, it took a lot of arguing. And they wouldn't let me go see my sister before she was in a helicopter over there. Mind you, they're transporting her in a helicopter to go see specialists in LA because they don't know what to do and her condition has gotten worse and they don't know how it's going to end, right? So why wouldn't they let like your family see you before you get transported? So I go up to the front, I'm like, I'm here for C-Lolly, like 
I'm her sister, I wanna see her. They say, oh, there's actually already someone in there with her, my mom. We can't have any more guys. I'm like, what? They literally just told me to go. Like, I'm gonna just go see my sister real quick and then walk out. They're not having it, they say no. My abuelita and my abuelo are literally just right there behind me. They're just like quiet, they don't even know what to do. And I start walking. I just start walking to the back and I'm like, I'm coming. And then I call my mom, I'm like walking. I'm like, mom, I'm walking. I, I don't know where to go. Where is it? Like what floor? I'm just walking. I'm hella fast. So I start walking in the beginning, my abuelita is like, no, what are you doing? I literally just walk. I'm like, don't fuck this up. Like I know where I'm going, you know? But I don't know where I'm going. I literally run around the hospital like probably like three or four times. And then I finally found the room. Once I find the room, the security guard, big ass security guard is in the front, like literally being such a rude person. Cause he was the one downstairs that was like, no, you can't go up. You can't go up up and I literally walked past him like mm. instead of like chasing me like I thought he was he really just went to the exact place that he knew I was gonna end up and just waited for me like a big bully I'm literally screaming at him I'm like you need to let me see my sister just let me see my sister and then I'm gonna leave like how is that bothering you you would do the same thing for your brother or sister I think you guys would do the same thing for your brother or sister so don't judge I was upset like this guy's literally taking his job too serious I don't know like this guy really just has some amusement to it he never moved my mom ends up coming from the other side and she's at the door she's crying because I don't know what the doctors were telling her like I don't know what was happening inside she comes up and she starts screaming and banging on the door so the security guard moves and i'm like right right and then my mom opens it and then i run in and i go see my sister i hug her my sister was just in a lot of pain so she was like kind of seeming upset and that really upset me i said something really stupid i was like all that and she didn't even want to see me do you remember that Okay, I'm so happy you don't. This literally stayed with me because it was so upsetting. Because later on when like there's like other thoughts and shit, I'm like, oh my God, the last thing that I literally said in front of her was stupid shit, like talking on my ass, like, oh, she didn't even want to see me. Like clearly like she's in pain. Clearly she's going through it. But anyway, I hug her and I say bye to my mom. They go in the helicopter. I go back home. By this time, They've been in LA hospital for about two days. I'm actually not getting any texts or calls from my mom at all. I really am not in the loop of what's going on. I'm really scared. I'm literally just sleeping all day. Like I feel like there's nothing that I can do. I end up taking an Uber to LA. I just remember like calling my mom a lot, what's happening. Like, I don't know, just mostly throughout the whole thing. I didn't know what was happening at all. Once I get to LA, not much communication about what's happening with my sister. I decide to walk it out just because my sister is literally my twin. I know like my sister's like my best friend. Like, we literally hang out all the time and we do everything together. She helps me out so much. Just does a lot for me day to day that she probably doesn't even know about. I love her a lot. <laughs> I was just super scared and I had no context of what was happening and there was really nothing that I could do. Even if I went to the hospital, they probably wouldn't even let me see her. I know for a fact that if I stopped working during the time that you were in the hospital, I would have had a lot of breakdowns. I wouldn't have been able to handle myself. I did stay with my friend Matthew. He was very kind enough to really take care of me around this time i was having breakdowns kind of just convinced myself that life wasn't real just kind of convinced myself that it was all fake i also was kind of convincing myself that it was my fault someone was like doing this to you because i was like it doesn't make sense like there's no reason for this to be happening there's no reason like she didn't do anything for this to be happening. I would think like it's my, f or like like something I did. And like, so they're like taking it out on you and like just watching my reaction. And does that make sense? Like take, like they're doing it so that way they could see what, how I'll react and they're laughing at me. I really just decided to really not think about the whole thing really because when I would, I would really get upset. When I was working, I was very much staying positive. I was like, my sister's gonna be okay. Like, I'm gonna see her very soon. And I knew that the whole time, but if I wasn't distracting myself, I would just get so locked into the fact of what was happening in the moment that I would probably lose my mind because I would be so scared. Yada yada yada, I'm working, she's in the hospital. I don't know what's happening or what's going on in the hospital at all. I find out she's in a coma at some point. That's very upsetting to hear. Wait, how long were you in the coma? 
three weeks. Maybe a week goes by while you're in the coma. I decided like, okay, I need to go like see you. I wasn't actually thinking that it was gonna be that hard. I walked into the hospital for the first time. Mom comes down and then this other lady comes down with her. I forgot her name. She's basically just someone who like tells people about me in the nicest way possible. Okay, do you want to like go in a room and sit down and like hear what's been happening with your sister and then see her? Or would you like us to just give you a quick summary right now and then we can go up and see her? And I was like, just give me a quick summary and then like I wanna go see her. Like I wanna see her as quick as possible and then I want to leave as quick as possible. I know that sounds selfish and really wrong and it also made me really upset as well because I would see I would see how I was handling my feelings and myself in the whole situation and I would be like you're such a horrible sister you're distracting yourself from the fact that she's like going through all of this and you're not being there for her and all of that so I really thought I was a horrible sister that was my mindset that I wanted to get out of there as quick as possible because it put me in a negative mood and feeling and everything so they start to give me a summary i start bawling my eyes out right away like i don't even know what they were telling me if you want details make sure go to my sister's channel they actually know all the details they end up taking me to the room that they were talking about in the beginning i actually end up staying in the room for probably like an hour just crying i finally go see you i talk to you only thing i'm thinking in my head is like don't cry while you talk to her you can hear me in the coma like i don't want her to hear me crying like i don't want to make her scared or sad I'm, like talking to you like try not to cry <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I played blow and I was singing blow to you. Then I get out and I leave right away. After that, it keeps going by for a while that I have no idea what's going on. I'm not in the loop. I'm surrounding myself with work and friends. Should we show them this? Oh, yes. These are some milk chocolates. Some milk chocolate squares that we will be trying. I've actually tried one, they're delicious. I will be trying. They're keto friendly. Mm. It literally tastes just like chocolate. Well, it is chocolate just without sugar. And it's actually so good. So my sister wakes up in the coma. I go see my sister again. And this time, my mom meets me outside the door before I go into the room. And she's like, I don't want you to be scared. Basically, just because my sister was not really in her state of mind. And it was kind of scary to see her like that. When we're in the hallway and my mom's telling me this, I hear screaming from my sister's room every like minute. You know, It's very scary. But I end up going in. I don't want to show her that I'm scared of how I was looking at you. It was a little bit scary. Do you remember no. seeing me this time? No. Basically how she was acting was a rapid wild animal. Yeah. I could still tell that you were still there because when you see me, even though you were screaming, like you were smiling, you were very happy to see me. That was the first time I had seen you since you were in the coma. Um, so that was my first time seeing you for like basically ever since I saw you before you even went on the plane. Mm -hmm. We were hugging a lot. It was a lot of hugs. Um, and you just wanted me to sit. It made me feel so good, like, just to see you. Then after that, I waited maybe, like, a week before I started going. Just because I didn't feel I could handle myself seeing you like that again. It went a few times more. She had been coming down a lot. She wasn't, like, fully talking. You could tell that she was getting better. I would go a lot more. We would snuggle, watch Bob's Burgers. Kiss baby Shasta. This was also around the same time my dog was with me in LA. I would always like see if I could come bring him, but they wouldn't let me. She really wanted me to bring him too. We would kind of just, you know, chat. She was able to talk, but it it wasn't how she talks now. Yeah. And I started just going to the hospital pretty much like every single day. My mom and my sister were living in the hospital. My mom wasn't able to leave. Like she didn't, she never left the hospital, not one day. My sister wasn't able to walk at first. It was very hard for her. I don't know. All, all the medical stuff was going on, all the other stuff was going on. I was just there to be there with my sister. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know about anything. My sister and my mom moved into the Ronald McDonald house, which is right next to the hospital. Pretty much staying there with them every single day. And we just lived at the Ronald McDonald for how long? Maybe like two months? No. We don't know how long we lived there. The details will probably be in her video. Probably. Then Ronald McDonald kicked us out for absolutely no reason. Absolutely no reason. They were like posting my sister on their Instagram, like using like, using her story because nobody survives West Niles and my sister did. She was literally doing amazing at Ronald McDonald's so they were just using her story. So basically either you don't get symptoms and it just goes away or you get real sick like me and you probably die. Or like a vegetable, right? A vegetable. They told mommy that I would become a vegetable. Yeah, for my sister to be here walking, talking, dancing, singing. Understanding my favorite shows like 
manifest. And with all of her memory, like she is completely awesome. That's gonna be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you give it a big thumbs up if you did. Make sure you guys please go check out my sister's channel because she's gonna be posting more. You guys need to go check out her video about the experience she went through in the hospital because my video doesn't really explain. Explain. Comment down below, say Lolly is the best. Watch all my other YouTube videos. Go check out all my other social medias. Bye guys, love you.